Hi, today I'm going to be saw sharpening and showing you my simple method for great results. Without a doubt, if you send your saws away to a professional sawsmith, you will get great results. But my simple methods can also give you great results and you don't have to be or don't have to have the inconvenience of not having a source for a few days and the cost of having it done. Now, all you need is a few simple tools so we'll look at those and I'll show you the methods I use and also how I remember the angles that I need. You're going to need saw sets. These basically push the teeth uh, either side of the blade to increase the width of the kerf which is the cut that you're making with the saw. Increasing that a little bit wider than the saw plate uh, means that you can saw, keep sawing deeply into the wood without the saw plate binding. Relatively simple to use and I'll show you that in action a little bit later. Also find it's good to have a permanent marker. Uh, this comes in handy in two ways. First of all you want to make sure that your tooth line is straight and that, that applies to virtually all saws in the workshop. Uh, to find out whether it's straight, if you put your permanent marker all the way along the blade and then run a file flat across there, it will remove marker from all the teeth as long as they're in, all in line and all nice and straight. If it doesn't, you need to level that uh, tooth line. And we do that using a mill file uh, I do it with a coarse mill file inside a block of wood. Now this block has a groove in it that uh, holds the saw file quite tight and that gives me a right angle here so that I can put my saw plate onto the block and then work it against the file. I find that the easiest method. You can do it in a saw vise. Talking of which, you will also need something to hold your saw. And this is a saw vise. This is a homemade one. I've done this on the channel. I've shown how to make this. So if you search through my videos, you'll find that video. Very simple to make. Uh, you can get um, metal ones. Uh, I think they're probably in production again now in limited numbers, but you can get antique ones. And there are various styles of wooden ones that you can get hold of. Really what it does is holds the saw plate nice and tight up here along where the tooth line is and stops the teeth from vibrating uh, when you're filing them. You're going to be filing them so you're going to need some files. Uh, a saw file is basically a triangular file. They come in various sizes and so each of the sides of the file uh, a certain width and when you pick what width you want you want to pick a width where the file itself comes halfway down into the tooth line so I don't know whether you can see here but the tooth is coming almost halfway across the width of that side of the file you don't want it to come more than halfway um, otherwise you'll end up not getting as much life out of your file so they come in a number of different sizes. To use them safely, you should make sure you put a handle on the end. So get yourself a few handles. That goes on like that and protects your hand. And you're going to need to be able to hold that at a particular angle to get the profile you want on the teeth. You can get commercial jigs for this, but simply a piece of wood with a hole in it. You can jam that on the end at the correct angle, both in that direction but also in rotational direction as well and you can set that up um, for exactly the right profile I'll show you that in a moment once you've been doing it a while you won't need that guide anymore um, and I do like to hold this end of the file so another handle is a good idea just protects the fingers now for angles Good idea to get yourself a protractor 
or I've got here a gauge that will give me all the angles I need. And also when you filed, you'll end up with some swarf on the far side of where you filed and I just run along the tooth line with a fine diamond plate. Glasses, I certainly need them and even if you don't need glasses then a magnifier is very good for checking all the points and making sure that you've filed right to the tips. And lastly, but not least, is a decent light. Nice close-up light so you can see what you're doing. To straighten the tooth line or to level it, I can use my block method. So the file in the block, hold that against the plate work that along. As I showed earlier, I can do that with the saw and the block just freehand and that works, I find better actually. Now you can just do this with a plain file, no block involved this time. One thing you do notice with files is you can't have the handle on them and go straight along the saw line because the handle is going to hit the end of the saw plate. So you're going to need to turn the file to a diagonal Make sure it's level, I'll put something that's a little bit wide on there. So this is instead of the block, just use a little stick. Um, it's much easier to tell then if you're going off level. Hold the file, get it at the right diagonal so you're not touching the handle. Job done. Now as I say, if you mark all the teeth, first of all with a marker, once all that mark has disappeared from all the tips, you know you've finished. Another thing to look out for is if you've done this, um, you will also find that the tips of the teeth all look bright. And I'll show you a little photograph of that. TPI, or teeth per inch, is a measure of the maximum number of whole teeth that will fit within a distance of one inch. PPI, or points per inch, is a measure of the maximum number of tooth points that will fit within a measurement of one inch. And this will always be one more than the TPI measurement. A low TPI results in a large tooth which cuts quickly but roughly, and a high TPI results in a small tooth that cuts slowly but more finely. Individual saws will generally have the same TPI throughout the whole tooth line, but sometimes the toe of the saw will have a slightly finer tooth, so a higher TPI, just to get this cut started. By topping a saw until all the teeth have disappeared completely, you have the ability to change the TPI to whichever you desire. The profile of a tooth is defined by three angles. The rake angle, which is the angle the front of a tooth makes with the tooth line. The fleam angle, which is the angle of the face of a tooth makes with a line perpendicular to the saw plate. And the slope angle, which is the angle the tip of the tooth makes with a line perpendicular to the saw plate. Everything I need to profile the teeth is covered on my saw vise because my memory is so bad. Uh, I can easily set up the rake for a rip profile between 0 and 10 degrees. For a cross cut, I just use 14 degrees virtually the whole time, so I can set that one up. Along the top here, I've marked out 65 degrees from the saw plate. Um, complementary angle of that is 25 degrees, that, that adds up to 90. And that gives me the fleam angle, which is the rotation in line with the top of the saw plate. I can just follow all those marks, I've put plenty along there so I can keep my, my saw file at the right angle as I do all those cuts. I've also put on here an indicator for the slope angle. Um, this top of the vise here is sloped at 30 degrees which is the maximum that I'd want to use. Pause on each of the following two diagrams to see a range of values for the profile angles for both rip and cross cut saws together with the profiles that I use for general work. I'm just taking a close look here to make sure that I file the teeth 
in the same way that they've done before. So it'll either fit nicely in the first or the second gullet and this one fits nicely in the second gullet. So it's the second one and every alternate one from there onwards. I'm trying to I prefer to get right down when I'm doing it. It's easier to see that you're landing in the correct um, gullet. And you can also see the tips of the teeth. And you can see when you're getting close to where you want to be. Take about half of that flattening away from the tops of the teeth, flip the saw around and do the alternate teeth and that should go to each point, each um, tooth should go to a point. With the first set done, I'll just turn the saw around the other way. So I'm coming back from the other end now. I've reset my guide. Um, the flea mangle is now the opposite way around. So we're going in this direction. Um, the steep rake angle is now on this side of the file. And we'll start in the first gullet. I'm taking longer this time because I'm, I'm aiming at is to see the tip of the tooth become almost or almost disappear. It's quite bright at the moment because it's got the um, the area that I filed down when I leveled the top. As that area gets thinner and thinner, it almost disappears, and that's when the the point ends up on the top of the tooth. When you're happy that you've got the shape of the teeth correct and they're nice, still nice and level, I just take off any of the roughness that's been pushed through by the file. And feel for any set. And there's virtually no set at all on there left over from the last time it was sharpened. Now I know that I'm going to have to set that a bit because of what I'm feeling. Uh, but if you can feel a bit of set, uh, try it out on some wood and see whether you can make a, a deep cut with it without it binding. If not, then you need to set it. In order for the saw to go through the work without jamming, we put a little bit of set on the teeth. And what that basically means is once you've ground the teeth, um, we part them a little bit along the saw plate. So that one tooth goes in one side of the plate, one goes towards the other side of the plate, uh, and do that all along, all along the um, tooth line. That just means you're cutting out a little bit more material, the kerf's a little bit wider than the saw plate, and so it moves through freely. We do that with uh, saw sets, and this is one variety, there's another one. Uh, you basically got to find out how your one works. This is an Eclipse um, number 77. And basically the saw plate goes through this gap. You set the amount of set for the teeth um, using unlocking here and turning this little cylinder around. That is actually the anvil against which if you can see up in this little gap, little finger comes out and presses against the anvil and that just presses the tooth away from the saw plate. That anvil can be rotated and we get different amounts of set. So we use the saw sets and what we're going to do is find all the teeth whose sharp points are on this far side and we're going to put the set over those, pull the trigger and that's going to just flex the tooth in the opposite direction. So the, the pointed edge of the tooth will be out from the saw plate. Then we'll flip the saw around, do it the other way around on the other side and then we'll have increased the kerf and hopefully the saw will, will uh, cut nicely and won't bind in the cut. And start going towards the toe. So every other tooth just pushed over.
Then go back to the saw file and in each of the gullets just lightly run through to give a much cleaner cut and a nice less or at least less ragged edge to the points. If when you first notice your saw is getting a little bit blunt you immediately go to this step uh, just two or three light strokes for every gullet uh, you can refreshen the saw and you can probably do that about four or five times before you need to go through the full process so just just for a general resharpen all you need to do is this final step of probably two light strokes with a saw file set to the correct angle just to freshen up the edges In the case of a rip saw blade, uh, it's very much the same process except it's a bit of an easier setup with the angles. You're going to want something between vertically upright on the back face, so that's the rake. So these get filed straight across. You can put the slight fleam on them just to make the cut a little bit um, less aggressive. I dropped the handle of the file a little bit to put a slope of about 5 degrees on it. So I really hope that's inspired you to give it a go. Get hold of some old saws, maybe at a boot fair or something like that. Uh, don't start on your most prized saws. But uh, I'm sure after several practices you'll be doing as well as I do. Cheerio. To be sure and see all future videos, subscribe to the channel. And remember to click notifications and select all.